Hello everyone. Welcome to Healthcare and Beyond. Welcome back to Healthcare and Beyond. I'm Dr. Larry Rosenberg, and we're continuing our discussions with the Rockland County Department of Health. We just spoke with Lori Messenger uh, and had a very interesting conversation about breastfeeding and about workplace wellness, neither of which I knew anything about, and I've had real education over the last half hour, so it's been really fascinating. We have today with us Michelle Kleinman, who's going to talk about a couple of other programs, important programs, uh, that the Rockland uh, County Department of Health offers. And let me just welcome you to our show, Michelle. Hi. Thanks for coming. Um, the first program I want to talk about is the weight loss program. Nationally, uh, in this country, it seems like a pretty staggering statistic, but roughly, and you can, can chime in on this, Michelle, but I think the last I read, Roughly one-third of Americans are what you would consider to be a normal weight. One-third of Americans are what you would consider to be overweight. And then one-third of Americans are actually, believe it or not, considered to be obese. And obesity is taking almost epidemic proportions. If there are uh, 100 and, well, there are probably about 200 million adult Americans, that, that translates into about uh, about 80 million uh, Americans, 70, 80 million Americans who are obese. And by obese, um, you know, it, it's to the point where your weight is starting to affect your health. Not only is that, is that a significant statistic in terms of the health of Americans, but from a cost perspective, it's costing us, at the very least, about $200 billion a year uh, in treating people for obesity and related diseases. Uh, which is a staggering, staggering statistic considering it is completely preventable. So obesity is, is something which is au courant. It is something which is of the moment. It is something uh, which is immediate and, and very, very important that we talk about. And so I'm very glad that Michelle is here to talk about not only obesity, but our, our efforts to try and reduce it and increase awareness of obesity here in Rockland County as well as in the country in general. So Michelle, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming today. Um, talk to us a little bit about the program, about Rockland County, about what we're doing for obesity, how we're promoting weight loss, and um, you can also tell me if my statistics were correct. I think they're somewhat correct. Yes, yes. Uh, the Rockland County Department of Health has several programs, but one of the ones I feel most proud of is our program called Lose to Win. And it's not just a funny title, it really means lose to win. We partnered with the Nyack Hospital. Mm -hmm. We received a grant several years ago called Steps to a Healthier Rockland County, and that was funded through the New York State Department of Health, but we've kept this specific program because we've had so much success with it. So it's through Nyack Hospital, and mm -hmm. you have people who have been trained to be lose to win counselors. Mm -hmm. And they do the program, and it costs $10, not $10 per week, it's $10 for eight sessions. Mm -hmm. And we meet for about an hour, hour and a half at different locations throughout the county because we have to make the healthy choice the easy choice, doctor, because if it's not going to be easy for someone, right. they're not going to do it. Right. It has to be kind of, just so we have our worksite wellness program, if it's there, I can make the easier choice. But right. if I have to travel half an hour, right. I may not be willing to do that. Right. So we have programs at some of the libraries in Rockland. We mm -hmm. have programs at some of the schools in Rockland. Mm -hmm. We have programs even at the hospital. And we have those, I said, for eight weeks. Okay. So somebody could come for eight weeks and it's $10. We have information and it's science-based. This is not stuff that we pull from the air. It has been reviewed and adjusted, I want to say three or four years ago, to incorporate the Choose My Plate and some of the newer things that are coming out there mm -hmm. that looks at how people make choices and some different effects such as, I don't know if you've heard of, you've ever heard of mindless eating? Have you heard of that? No. It's a book by Dr. Brian Wasnick out of Cornell University. They talk about some of the 
how to change your environment so you'll eat healthier, but we put part of that in. We look about situations when you're going out to eat. Mm -hmm. We look at portion control. So those are some of the things that you would learn. We tell people how to food shop because if you don't have the food in your home, you're not going to make it. Right. I don't, do you know how many restaurants are in Rockland? Um, I don't. 950 restaurants are in Rockland County. We have one of the smallest counties outside of the four bur the, the boroughs of the right, New York City. Right. And we have a lot of restaurants. So the when I say this, uh, you can, I can go on 59, Route we 59 have and look. 300 roughly now 300,000 people in Rockland. And so we if we have roughly 1,000 restaurants, that means there's one restaurant <laughs> for every 300 people. Well, it's, if you go up, up and down Route 59, the choices are there. If you go into the mall, the choices are there. So I have to look at how am I going to make a healthy choice. And right. so we, have to, we teach people how to, when they're going out to eat, and we also teach people for how to keep a stock pantry, how to make food at home. So those are some of the things that you, you would learn on our, on our now, classes. In this particular program, the Loose to Win program, is that a... Is it sort of a program which you, which you imported cookie cutter from an organization? Was it something that you developed? Was it kind of a hybrid? More of a hybrid. We looked okay. at one from Binghamton that right. was done. It was, I think it was called Mission Melt Away, and that was okay. from um, Binghamton, which is um, just north of us, right. about three hours north. Okay. And we looked at that, and we worked with Broome County. That's where Binghamton's located. Okay. And we worked with them because they've had success with that. So New York State Department of Health said, we'll take a look at that. So we looked at that, and we brought in con the specialist, Nyack Hospital, the chief dietitian, Claudette Clark, worked on it. Mm -hmm. Linda Suarez, who's the certified diabetes educator, worked on it. Right. We had people from the health department worked on it. And we looked at this, and how to deliver these practical messages in a practical way, at a cost-effective way, $10, and that's excellent for eight weeks. We talk about how to incorporate physical activity in. Sometimes people think exercise is a, well, if they hear that word, I have to exercise, but we look at how can we bring in physical activity mm -hmm. into your daily life? How's it gonna fit for your lifestyle? And it's nice because it's in a classroom setting, so there's, 15 up to 18 people per class. Sometimes right. we do get a dropout rate, but usually about 12 to 15 people stay in the class. Mm -hmm. And we all feed off each other. We show them, we also tell them about all the resources here in Rockland. All of the parks in Rockland are free. We talk about the walking tours. We have programs about our guided tours. Have you heard of that? Our guided walks that we have through Rockland? We have. You no, know, I have heard something about that. I've, I've seen something advertised about that. Mm hmm. So we teach. I don't remember where, or I don't remember. Well, when, they're but I have they're seen all over. There's over 31 yeah. parks in yeah. Rockland. Yeah. County parks. So we've guided tours of that, and we learn something about the park, and you're encouraged to go back and visit that park on your own. And right. It's, it's wonderful. It's a great. So that's one of the sessions we talk about how to fit physical activity, and we talk about how to fit, use a pedometer correctly. We talk about how to make informed decisions when you go out to eat. So those are some of the things we, we cover. So you talk about what to put in your house, what to buy, what to shop. You talk about exercise. Um, do and you... Also, I should say chronic disease. So that's where, that's where we looked at the best practice right. and what is being done and how right. do we put that into our curriculum. And okay. then when things were changed through the my, Choose My Plate, we had to revise some of this. Right. Right. The, you know, the other point that I, that I would make, and this is sort of, a, sort of a medical point, you know, is that, you know, obesity, you know, is, is not a self-limited disease. And I, I don't know if I would call it a disease, I call it a condition, but it leads to so many other things. It leads to so many other complications, so many other parts of, of your body, of your physiology get involved with obesity, which which means that, you know, if you take a proactive role, if you, you know, go on a weight loss program, you're doing something not only for your weight, but for your entire body in general. You know, your lifespan, your longevity, your energy level, your quality of life, 
I mean, the, the, the effects are, are negative, but they're just as, as positive, you know, if you go ahead and, on a weight loss program, you know? We've seen, and this is not something I made up, we have our diabetes prevention program, but right. one of the things that it talks about is with the 7% weight loss, which right. if you think about it is not that much, if you take a, right. a we all can do percentages, a 200 pound person, right. if they lose 14 pounds, right. their blood pressure is reduced. Oh yeah. That's huge. It is huge. It is huge. And, so, and, 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 and over years, you know, it, the, an elevated blood pressure will lead to, to serious problems. So, kidney, you know, you, I, course, I don't have to tell any, you. Any number of things, yeah. What kind of people, I mean, uh, rather, than, rather than ask you a question, let me, let me throw out a statement there. I would guess that, you know, uh, you need or you would need to be, or the kind of people that come to programs like, like the one that's offered here, probably are pretty motivated already. I mean, people probably have made some kind of a commitment to come to the program. Do you find that that's the case, and do you find that that contributes to the success of the program? I find many things, because you may have a, a spouse who comes. Right. He or she may want to come They'll come and they ask their spouse to come for moral support, and that spouse does not want to be there. Right. Uh, but they learn, they start to enjoy the class, mm -hmm. and I think there's a, a camaraderie that happens in the, these classes. Right. And it's wonderful to see less of everyone each week when mm -hmm. I say that, because they come in and they get on that scale, and Safe weight loss is a, is a pound to two pounds a week. This is not the biggest loser where pe we don't make people cry. Right, we, don't, right, um, right. we don't do seven hours of exercise because if you look at that, you have to uh, translate this to real world. Right, What's happening right. in my daily life? Right, right. So that's what we work with them. And I, I take a very uh, practical approach and so do all of the, of the counselors who've mm -hmm. been trained in that. We have to look at what's gonna work for the person who's working full time Maybe it's a mom who's, who's working at night. Uh, maybe it's somebody who's retired who just has been, been out of the workforce and now doesn't know how to do some of the things. Right. Maybe it's someone who's been visiting restaurants and does, forgot how to cook. Maybe mm -hmm. there, there's many reasons. So when that person comes, yes, some of them are motivated. Some right. of them have tried all these things and they'll right. tell you the first day, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried this, I've tried that. I've been on um, so many weight loss programs. And we ask them to give this, it's eight weeks. If you think about right. it, it's not it's eight weeks. Try it out, it's $10. We, we, we do, I said, have a small dropout rate, right. but we get great success. How do you measure the success, objectively, how do you measure the success of, of a program like this? Well, what's wonderful is I believe last year, or mm -hmm. the year before, I should say this, uh, Denise Roma is in charge of this. She is the registered dietitian and the certified diabetes educa educator at Nike Hospital. Right. I think there was almost 937 pounds lost two years ago because we have to weigh the person weekly. Right. So we're going to calculate that first weight and then every week. And there's mm -hmm. some people who don't, who don't want to look at that scale. And I right. say, get on and right. I'll look at it for you. Right. And they may just want the last weight. But we have to calculate all this. Mm -hmm. And then we send that into Nyack Hospital and they look at that. So that's what I said out of, gosh, I can't remember how many classes they had. I think they had, I'm not sure, so I don't want to say, but I can get that for you. But they got a loss of 937 pounds across the county. That's, that's a lot. That's th a lot. Yeah, that's not, that's not something to sneeze at. That's a, that's a lot of weight lost. Sometimes they find it, but... Why do you feel, and, and it sounds like, you know, it sounds like, you know, you're having a lot of success with this. What, what makes the program that you have, what's the secret to it? Why is, why is your program working when, say, other approaches might not be working? What I is really it about believe your that it's realistic. Mm-hmm. Okay. How am I going to do these which changes? Makes, which makes a lot of sense to me, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. Americans, we when we see these shows, Biggest Loser, or we watch these weight loss shows, you're not on a ranch. You're not um, secluded from everything. Right. I mean, reality right. is, are you going out to dinner tonight, and there's going to be a chocolate cake there? And right. how, how am I going to... What's the strategy? I can't give people willpower. I right. can't. But I can give you strategies mm -hmm. to figure this out. 
And I'm also, we, we don't talk about denial. Right. Okay, there's, I happen to like a Linzer tart. That's my favorite. Okay. But hazelnut Linzer tart, you know. But if I have it there, and it's there, I may have a slice of it. Right. And we teach people how to taste your food. Let it savor in your mouth. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a restaurant or, or with your family and you watch people and they're eating and they're just eating so quickly? They're not taking time to taste their food. We educate people to take the 20 minutes for the stomach to tell the brain it's full, that your apostat kick in. We give them strategies. I tell them to go to their oven and do the timer, take 20 minutes before you go back for seconds. So we try to teach, I said, strategies. So when I, um, I used to live in another state, I'm not gonna mention the state, and um, I had a little culture shock. This is a couple years ago, like 20, right? <laughs> and uh, they had the buffet. Now I, didn't grow up with buffets, but I went to this buffet, and there were just... Was it Pennsylvania? Yeah. I, I, was it the Good and Plenty Buffet? No, it was a different one. Okay. There were like... Mounds? Piles and piles of food all over the place. And people would just take these plates of food, they they take several plates of food, they'd pile them like this. They'd bring them to the table and they'd go to work, all right? And when they got done with this job, they'd go complete another job, all right? And the rapidity with which they would eat the food and the amount of food that they would eat was amazing. I didn't even eat. I was just sitting there looking at all these people eat all this food. Have you ever been on a cruise? When you no. watch people, I, I, I saw a person take 14 pieces of bacon and they just, and dipping it in diet syrup. I said, why dip it in that in diet syrup at this point, right? But what happens to that brain that makes us say, I have to have this? As you said, when you went to that buffet. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, like a it was like Project Eat. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> mounds and mounds of food, you know? Well, we I couldn't eat that much. I couldn't eat that much in like, you know, six months. But man, they were just piling it in, you know? This is a restaurant plate, okay? Right. So right. people want to, be, to fill this up. Right. If you go out to eat, you probably want to see this filled. Otherwise, you're going to say jip joint. Yeah, you well, want it depends to what it's filled with, but yeah. But most people want two chicken breasts, right? Right, right. Chicken parmesan, two breasts. Right. Okay, then, then maybe you'll have a... A, a big thing of pasta. Right. Maybe you have a salad over here. Right. You want a glass of wine. Right. Okay, and then you wanted the garlic bread too for maybe right. thirteen ninety five. Right. But that's our mentality. So we want to see the most that's for the our money. That's the first course. Yeah. Right. I didn't. I didn't say dessert yet. So right. okay. that's. But that's what we have to look at, and we educate people to remember these. They used to be called. I think when I was growing up, the Corel plates, they're about this size. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the smaller. But we educate people, and I think sometimes the first step is you're not going to have that person who's, who's at the good, I, I say good and plenty buffet, but those buffets. But just to get them to think about, and it could be this plate, mm -hmm. Dr. Rosenberg, but maybe they'll have half with vegetables. Right. And if you ever go to the, those buffets in Pennsylvania, sometimes the chow chow, that's the pickled vegetable from yesterday, right. but they have these vegetables and a lot of butter and things. But if we can get them just to have the vegetables, steamed vegetables or a big salad, that mm -hmm. would take up half the plate. And that's, we ought to get some more. And fiber helps, what, fill us up? And I always say keep broccoli fiber moving. Does, fiber does a lot. Fiber does a lot for you. Yeah, yeah. These are pretty cool, though. So, Dee, can you, can you focus in on this? This is our, our portion plate. So here is meat and proteins right here. That should be the size of the palm of your hand. Okay. About, and that's okay. a, even for a two-year-old. And interestingly, what I, what I read was that... Um, the recommend, and it's, and it's pretty well known at this point, that you try and keep your red meat down to maybe once or twice a week. Focus in on fish and chicken as much as you can. Is that still pretty much the recommendation? Or, or for our 
persons who are vegans, we can put some right. tofu there. Okay. We could put some more whole grains, some, some ones with higher in protein. So. Okay. Now this here is, is whole grains. Now what are some, what are some whole grains that, that people should be eating? I just made a great tabbouleh salad that's made with bulgur wheat. Okay. Okay. Quinoa. Uh, an Italian one that I don't th uh, that it, you don't hear a lot of mentions is the farro. That whole grain. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. You can get it at some of the higher end restaurants. But I left because I had it growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. and that farro's good. I mm -hmm. said bulgur. Quinoa is another one. Those are some of the higher the. Uh, uh, white people like to go to white rice, but why not not try brown rice, wild okay. rice, some of those? Okay. Um, and those are all those are and, and whole grains are, well, among other things, they're high fiber foods, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then we have fruits here, and we have as a matter of fact, let's take a look at this thing, um, Michelle, the mind plate. This um this uh, uh, diagram here, by the way, uh, if I'm correct, is from the Department of Agriculture. So, yeah, let me just, I want to show everybody this. This is a, let me bring it over here, Michelle, because I have that camera right there. So this is a, um, this is really a, a sort of a, a larger, a larger version of this. But as you can see here, you know, the portions as, as we had on the plate here are protein, uh, largest, actually vegetables have the largest, then the grains have the second, the fruits and the dairy over here. Um, now, uh, we all know that vegetables and, and fruits are, are good for you. Two things I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know what? Let's come back in a second. Um, I think we're, we're, we're going to just have a little break time here. Uh, we'll be back with Michelle Kleiman in just a minute to continue our, our very interesting discussion here on the weight loss and obesity and eating healthy. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Healthcare and Beyond. Uh, Lawrence Rosenberg here. We'll see you in a couple. Welcome back to Healthcare and Beyond. We are talking about weight loss, obesity, and your health with Michelle Kleiman from the Rockland County Department of Health. Now we've been talking about the uh, healthy, the my plate. I think it's called the my plate, which, um, and I know that the my plate. There's the, there's the my plate portion that the Department of Agriculture came up with. I know that Harvard has their own version of it. Yes, uh, yes. Slightly different. But two things I want to talk to you about. So we talked about proteins. We talked about you know eating fish and eating chicken. If you're going to have proteins, if you're a vegetarian, yep. tofu, right. or if you're not a vegetarian, tofu. I love tofu. I love tofu, and I'm not a vegetarian. Yeah. Yes, I'm, not, I'm definitely not a vegetarian. I'm like a, a meatitarian. You know, <laughs> I could eat meat five times a day, but I do love tofu. I really do, um, and uh, and whole grains and, and the kind of whole grains that are good for you, fruits and vegetables. Now. A couple of things that, that I'm curious about. One of the recommendations is that you go with whole fruits rather than fruit juices. Why is that? Well, whole fruits, you're going to get the fiber, and it's going to help okay. fill you up. Yeah. Because if it, how long would it take you to, to drink eight ounces of orange juice? About a second. Right. But it, it, if I have to squeeze four oranges to get the same amount, right. would you eat four oranges in, in a few minutes? No. No. So. Not at all. So, so that one orange, you're going to eat it. It's going to take some time. Right. I have to digest. I have to chew it. Right. It's going to help fill me up. Okay. Right before here, I had an apple. Now, if I had the apple juice, it would. I wouldn't have had that. I would have okay. drank it. But I have that fiber in me now. Okay. It's going to help fill me up. Okay. Or now plus 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 those vitamins and minerals <laughs> right. and all the phytonutrients. I mean, right. excellent. Right. Now, they say that green vegetables are better to have than, you know. French fried potatoes. <laughs> well, that, that's not a vegetable. If you're doing, you have to compare apples to apples, all right? You can't do French fries and a, and, and bok choy. French you fries can't to do French that. fries, yeah. But um, I mean, in general, uh, are there certain fruits that are better to have than other fruits, or are they all pretty much good to have? Well, the powerhouse is a papaya. That's a really a great fruit. Mango is okay. fantastic. Kiwi, and that's relatively inexpensive. Oh, you can yeah. get that under a dollar. Yeah. Powerhouse. Really, that has From vitamin C, potassium, and, and a banana is. Yeah. I mean, look at look at gorillas. 
they live on bananas. Banana they don't live is, on french fries. No, no. Can you imagine if they lived on french fries? They would, well, they'd be gigantic. Would be, yes, yes. We'd be back to the prehistoric yeah. age. <laughs> but, but bananas are a powerhouse. After athletes work out, that's the best thing to have these things, yeah. this, the sugar sweetened type of vitamin water drinks. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people that's just expensive urine. Right. Have Do yourself a favor, do your right. body a favor, and have a banana. Mm -hmm. They're less than a dollar. Actually, they're on sale at all these supermarkets for 49 cents a pound. Right. I mean, right. that's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's penny wise, pound foolish, because what it would cost you if you were sick and you have to go buy medication, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. Because people have said to me, well, fruits and vegetables are very expensive. And I said, is your health expensive? You know, that, let's go in the preventative stage, and that's what we teach with these chronic disease programs right. is having those fruits and vegetables are such an intricate part. It bothers me when people just have, you said French fries, one, and then their hamburger. Right. And I say this to, to my spouse a lot, what happened, what, you didn't get the kid vegetables tonight? You don't always have to have a vegetable. No, no you don't, but then you're missing that, that fiber that helps right. fill you up, and you're missing all those potential Nutrients. Right, right. right. Um, the other thing I was curious about, well, the, and, and bok choy is a, for the vegetable is the powerhouse. Bok choy and kale. That used to be, but but bok choy is really very good. I mean, full of calcium. It's so good for you. It's a powerhouse. All right. Um, fats and oils are now in. They weren't so in several years ago. Why is that? I am not a doctor or a researcher. I'm a registered dietitian, um, and that was that fat-free craze that right. we thought. But right, right, right. fat has the most concentrated calories. It's nine grams. Right. But we need fat. Otherwise, right. our hair would fall out, and we'd have all wrinkled skin, and we'd right. be dry. So right. we do need fat. The problem is, Americans, we get too much fat. So, uh, but that doesn't mean you can go too much on the fat. I mean, right. I, so we want some good fat, some and some of the best fats, very underrated sunflower seeds. Very good, great snack, and right. we, need, do, we do need some fats. Oils, mm -hmm. we say olive oil, can, some people like canola. Right. Um, now, coconut is being brought back, but we still, there's still an amount to have. Okay. Just because olive oil is good for you doesn't mean you want to you fry or pour it all right. over. So there's right. an amount, doctor, okay. so you, everybody has their thumb on them. So they can't tell me that they don't know how much I'm talking about. But if you have three tablespoons of oil a day, three right. to four, that's pretty, depending on your size, that's right. pretty good. That's what right. you need. That's how much fat you need. D problem is we, have, we get too much. So it's just a question of, of, it's not a question of kind, it's a question of degree, really, how much. You should have it. You just shouldn't have too much of it. Right. But that's the best. Right. That's, it's so concentrated. It's nine right. calories per gram versus four calories per right. gram. So right. that's why... We, we were t telling people to go with the carbohydrate route, but right. if you're having a whole sleeve of crackers, that's not because they're fat-free. That's not the best choice. It's because they taste good. Well, but some people just like that. The, oh, it's, I, I love when people say, but it's fat-free. We had someone call the health department. She had, was pre-diabetes, right. and she said, well, the doctor told me to stay away from sugar mm -hmm. because I had pre-diabetes. Right. So she said, I bought sugar-free pie, sugar-free cookies, right. and I said, but... That was not calorie free. Right, right, right. But in her mind, she was staying away right. from the sugar. Well, she would have want. She would have been the one to to who this would be the best thing for. Yeah, the yeah. fiber and the vegetables and the and the bok choy and all that. And the message is simple. Yeah. This choose my plate. And at the health department, these are what our programs do. We right. we we give you the strategies, and we I. My colleagues like to say that uh, actually some of the programs call it the toolbox. Right. And the toolbox has some strategies in there that you right. would, would look at. Now, um, the, other, the other area of controversy, and, 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 and where I'm getting this from, is um, I recently read a little bit about, um, I guess about this, the, the, the construction of the My Plate. And it was, I guess it's, it's, it's sort of evolved over the years. So mm -hmm. there have been some changes over the last couple of years. The other part of it that, that um, that I wondered about was milk products. Now, milk products, as I remember a couple of years ago, uh, were, were promoted a lot. Not so much anymore. Why is that, Michelle? And is that accurate, or, and if so, why? Well, uh, there's, there's, especially in Rockland, there's a, um, I, I speak from the Rockland County Department of Health and the United States Department of Agriculture, right. but 
two to three servings of dairy can right. some be some different roles. So dairy rich foods. So that's why I talked about bok choy is a right. is a calcium rich food. Uh, broccoli, people have said is calcium rich food, but I'd have to eat a lot of it. Right. But milk, an eight ounce cup of milk, low fat milk, one right. percent, is um, that's a one serving. Uh, Greek yogurt or any of the yogurts out on the market, and right. plain yogurts are right. also a powerhouse for for calcium. Mm -hmm. That's another serving, and then if you had a slice of cheese, mm -hmm. so that's there's your th or two slices of cheese. There's your three servings of of calcium, but that right. seems to be a way that we can get it more of it. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, if you if you're not someone who wants to get that calcium from cow's milk, right. there's almond milk. Right. Okay, and as long as make sure that you are having that vitamin D, otherwise I can't absorb this calcium. Right. So there's almond milk, but I wouldn't get chocolate flavored almond milk because right. that's that's eating more calories. I'd get the unsweetened or the lightly sweetened almond milk. Mm -hmm. There's rice milk out on the market. There's soy milk. Right. There's so there's different milk type beverages out there or vegetable or the the soy type and I said the almonds if you want to get that calcium. Mm -hmm. So those are those are another way you can get that calcium and not if you don't want to have milk from a cow, right. there's ways to get your calcium. So I, I, but yes, there are the two, there are some people who are very, who um, are not having, that they don't want to have cow's milk. But, right. if, but you don't need that much. Right. Um, and also I tell people, cow's milk, it's not good to have when you're having your iron supplement, you know, especially if you're pregnant and you've right. been told to have, because milk, calcium decreases iron absorption, so you don't want to have that, even mm -hmm. with orange juice with calcium, right. you don't want to have that with your prenatal vitamin that has the iron in it. You know, it's a funny thing. When I was a kid, they said you should drink a glass of milk every day. I never did. I had a diet soda every day when I was a kid. Well. A lot, more than I probably should have. And I never had a glass of milk every day. But then when I got older, I really liked it. I really liked chocolate milk. And then we went to, there was a, a dairy, you know, a, remember in the old days, they used to deliver the, yes, the milk uh, cartons yes. to your, yes, to your I'm, house. I'm really dating myself. No, no, I, I had I mean, that. You think I, I'm living in the 1860s, no. but you know, you used to have the It was in the 70s, doctor, it used to come. Yeah. So where I lived really in Westchester. I'm myself that yeah. much. Okay. So they would bring the milk carton there and... Um, it used to be in a glass bottle, right? Yeah, glass bottle, and they'd put it there on, on your porch and mm -hmm. you'd sort of have a, a sort of a... a silver you know, type, st right, a stainless silver, steel right, type that of was, aluminum. Right, that was insulated. Mm -hmm. You'd take the milk out, you'd drink it, you'd put it back, the milkman would yep, come by and, with, you know, yeah. yeah, with all kinds of joke about the milkman. But um, we used to get the milk and, uh, and I hadn't had it for years because, you know, I went away to school to send. The other thing, and all the... Um, and all the supermarkets at that point started to put the milk in cartons, as, as you know. Well, about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so, I found this dairy that delivered the milk to me. And the chocolate milk was out of this world. It tasted like a milkshake. So having not had a glass of milk every day, I was having like two or three glasses of milk every day. It was unbelievable. It was absolutely delicious, you know. So it's funny how things kind of kind of turn around, you know. But uh, and I love it. I would drink it every day now. Of course, I don't. We don't. You know, we don't. We don't have that anymore. But uh, it really was. It really was amazing. I didn't realize that what I was missing out on when I was a kid, you know. But uh, needless to say, the other thing, um, Michelle, I wanted to. I know you wanted to talk about two things which are really, really important in terms of in terms of. Um, Obesity and weight loss. Portion control. Tell us about portion control. It's it's all in your hand, right. basically, right. because we look at this. The palm of your hand, whether you're six feet or you're three feet tall, for even the little ones, that's about the amount of protein you should be having. So right. that's that's a good thing. We look at portion control because sometimes we are portionless, as at that buffet that you were at. It was portionless. Right. It's, there's no. It was infinite. It was, it was infinite. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was I, exponential. <laughs> it was like galaxies of food coming in. <laughs> and Never forget I, that. I, I was taught to clean my plate when I was growing up. Right. So even if there was a little bit there, my mother would say, oh, there's, 
can't you finish that? Right. And that's what we were talking about breastfeeding, but right. with breastfeeding, we at that when the baby comes off the breast, they're full. No one's you know when you when you give a baby a bottle, everyone says, oh, did, did he finish the bottle? Right. And if he didn't finish it because we paid for that formula, we, right. we want to. So right away we start overfeeding as right. a, but we think whereas when they come off the breast, they're full. Nobody says, oh, did he finish the breast? Like right. nobody says that. So the point is, <laughs> we we say the same thing on our plate. <laughs> I have to order another one. <laughs> So when you have a little bit of egg there, <laughs> that was what my mom would say, oh, the, you know, there's a party going on in your stomach and they want to join. So I, I would finish the plate. And yeah. I, that's the way I was taught to clean the plate. So it's very hard now, even as an adult and a registered dietitian, if you give me a serving, if you give me this, there could be, as the registered dietitian in me, I'd look at it and say, oh, there's two servings in here. I'm only going to have one. Right. But I'm trained to to finish what I what you give me. Right. That's and it's sub I don't even do it consciously. I just finish it. So is that I mean So and, that's when we talk about port there's two portions in here. Would you share this with anybody? Um well let me see what it is. Well No, I would eat the whole thing myself. Right. And, and get another one. Yeah. See there's two portions in here, but All if right. you weren't looking, yeah. you would say, oh, hundred and fifty calories. Well and and when I talk to people, I'm amazed there was a, a a thing of potato chips, and I was at a school, and I was, yeah. and one of the students said, "Oh, 250 calories for that whole thing? I can eat that bag." Yeah. And I said, "How many servings in there?" And he had no idea that there. Were, he said, so "What are you talking about servings?" He said, "Wow, there's seven in here." So he had no, and I said, "That's seven times 250." Right. But that's the issue: is we don't know portion. If you, when you go to a certain, and that's just one. That's like just a big bag of potato chips. Yeah. Have you ever gone? There's a certain warehouse in Rockland County that they give the big, big items. Yeah. So when you get those, I like pita chips, and you buy the yeah. huge bag. Yeah. I have to really some of the things we talk about in our yeah. CDMP classes, our chronic disease prevention classes, is to take a a small bowl, take that portion. Right. What am I doing with that bag, doctor? Am I going to leave it open? I could, but then I'm going to go back to it. So right. if I take it, I seal it up, put it back in. So that's what you're going to allow yourself. That's it. That's that's my my portion. So so we, we uh, talked we, a little bit before about willpower, and you know you can't teach people willpower. No, but you can teach them strategies. You can teach them how to develop behavioral patterns that will facilitate their using their willpower. You can teach them things that you can do that will make it easier to employ or to, to, to let that willpower take hold. Yes. And, and it sounds to me like that's part of the psychology behind what you're doing here with we, the weight loss program. We educate on that very, right. that, that's because if, if I, Sometimes some weight loss programs, they buy the food for you, you buy the food, you do this, and it's all right. portion control. But right. after that's gone, then you're back to, well, I gotta make my own food. Right. So, the, so what we do is we teach people how to go to the supermarket. Right. If you don't, if you, this is one of our sayings that we say, that if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Right. Because if you don't have a plan when you walk in that supermarket and you see a certain big donut company, right. begins with an E, right. that's right in front of you and it's in your eyesight and right. you forget anything Michelle Kleiman said, right. but you see they have the golden donuts there, right. but now it comes home and you're gonna eat it. Right. That's what's tough, but we talk about how to go food shopping, how to avoid sometimes looking high and low right. because the healthy stuff may be up here or down right. here. Right. And we give you a, we talk about you have to come up with three meals for the week. Okay. And some people, what, what do you mean you have to come up with three meals for the week? What are you talking about? And we educate them how to do that, how to come up with three meals for the week, how to go food shopping, how to incorporate, how to make these things, how to cook double so they right. can have it for the next day. Right. So if they're making grilled chicken, make, make 10 breasts instead of your usual five for the family. And the next day you'll have it to have right. either for a lunch or Mm -hmm. or for two days later for grilled chicken salad right. or we, we, we educate them on things like this to make it possible. Interesting. So we, we have to give we have to give them strategies. We tell them to put the main the entree, leave it on your stove mm -hmm. and you know what you're gonna put because sometimes people are 
not lazy, they just don't want to get up. And you'll put the salad on the table. So if you want seconds, I'm going to go for the salad or the mm -hmm. carrots. Uh, it's t the human being does not want to get up and go, go over there and get the pasta. So we have to do strategies like that. We tell people if you want your ice cream, don't bring a gallon of fat-free ice cream home that you, if you want ice cream, go out and have it once a week. Get the kitty size and enjoy it. Right. And, and then you, limit it to once a and week. And limit it to once a week. But if once it's in the home, like I said, those big pita chips, so I love when people tell, oh, they're hidden. Well, do you know where they are? Yes. Well, then they're not hidden. You know, that's, I, I love when people always say in, these, in our classes, they're, oh, I hide them. But if you know where they are, that's not hidden. No, that's not. Sort of like when my wife go out and I go out to dinner, I'll get a, something to eat, and then she'll get something to eat. And I'll eat some of hers, and she'll say, well, why did you eat that? I say, well, it really doesn't count if it's yours. It only counts if it's mine. <laughs> Same kind of psychology, huh? <laughs> do, do you do take care of, um, I share, and I married someone who doesn't like to share, oh. but he has a different, he'll share with me sometimes, and he'll yeah. say, all right, but we do really promote that take half home. Yeah. That's one of our biggest things, is oh, take half good. home. Um, Michelle, I could talk to you for hours about this. This is so fascinating, and you have so much knowledge about this, but we are out of time for oh. now. We did not get to talk to some of the other things about that, the other topics I really want to discuss with you. We so have, we'll our, have to, yeah, we have, have to come back. But this is just fascinating, and it is as important as it is fascinating. Um, the health of our of our of our citizens, of our citizens in Rockland County, uh, generally is um, is is very important. And and the and what we eat uh, has a very significant effect on our on our general health, as we have seen. Uh, over the years and through numerous studies and are becoming more and more aware uh, as an educated society. Uh, we're through, uh, I'm just about out of time now. Um, I just wanted to uh, say good evening to everybody. We've had a fascinating conversation here with Lori, a fascinating conversation here with Michelle. Uh, you're looking, you're um, <clears throat> watching Healthcare and Beyond. I'm Dr. Lawrence Rosenberg. Uh, we will be back to discuss more with the Rockland County Department of Health and I want to thank them both for coming. And we look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Good evening. <laughs>